Okay, so back to the um, Prado drive shaft. What we're going to do is just see in there, check out that. You can see the grease is actually starting to harden up a little bit. That's the grease there. Um, it's still in reasonable condition, but it is starting to harden up a bit. Uh, so what we're going to do is only repacked about three or four years ago. While you're here, realistically, you should repack it, but uh, running a bit short on time. So seeing as it's still good, I'm going to pack a bit more grease into it and uh, continue on. So here's our Molly grease. Like I said before, I prefer the EP one and a half, so it's a bit softer and doesn't uh, harden up like this, but this is what we got, so a bit more in. When you repack that, you want to force the grease into the joint, <coughs> all the different parts of the joint, so that it uh, gets some good lubrication in there and work it around as well. Grease actually isn't that bad; it's not much stiffer than what it is out of the out of the uh, drum. <coughs> The boot's nicely seated, seated on there as well, and uh, we'll feed in the CV boot clamps. So one thing to pay attention to is the direction that um, you feed the clamps on, so when it's going the forward direction it's less likely to pick up on something, so it goes through this way, folds back over itself that way. Um, and this is the drive shaft on the uh, curb side for Australia. So going forwards, it's turning this way. So um, that's less likely to pick up on anything going forwards. Wrap that around there. The CV band is just a little bit short, so I'll only be able to use it with one round. It's fine if it's still work. <coughs> yeah, so, what do is do up this band here. See that? And this one here, so we've got a little tool for it. Oh no, this might be too short as well. A bit too short for the tool. So they, they need a bit of a tail to pull them on. Come on. Got nice and tight. Once it's tight, you roll it over 
itself and that locks it in. And what you do is give it a tap. Fold the two little tabs over. backwards and forwards should there we go nice and clean so there. So what you can do if you want to be really uh, thorough in terms of balancing it, where that one is, we'll put it 180 degrees apart and we'll put the outer tie on there. Make sure it's fully seated. Do it up. And that's this side done. So, lovely. We have this side here, which is the um, diff side. That tripod goes into here. So I'm just make sure there's plenty of Oh, the only thing we should do is just check that the grease is in good condition, which it is. Put that in. Get rid of these cable ties. Okay, so this is the front disc. You can see it's a bit rusty in here, uh, as well as here, so we'll just clean it up a little bit um, so that it's got a nice smooth seating so before we go. So a little bit of big there. Eat some maroon scotch right. Okay, so there we go, just taking some of the uh, surface corrosion off it. Um, before we mount the brake pads on, we use brake and uh, brake clean to clean up that surface to make sure there's no oily residue. You can also see here, we've removed all the surface rust, so it's got a nice flat surface. Do the same on this side. So that's where the wheel uh, spots do. Okay. 
Okay, so it's nice and clean, flat surface. All the loose scales been taken off here. Um, so all we'll I'll do is measure the thickness of the disc uh, to make sure it's still within spec, uh, and then we'll put it aside and move on to the knuckle. Okay, so the thickness of the disc is supposed to be 26 millimeters maximum. And we've got 27.4, so that's good. Today's date up here. Okay, so I've just marked the date and what I measured on there. Just um, as a bit of a record, it may burn off later on, but I guess we know it's there and I'll note it down to the logbook. So that's ready to go. Put that aside. Okay, so this one is the original knuckle from the car. It's been stripped of the um, wheel bearing, the ABS sensor, um, the backing plate and the disc. And uh, yeah, it's got little bolts and pieces. Bolts, bits and pieces, that's been stripped off. Um, so we'll compare this to the other one. And on the new one, we have to replace this oil seal at the back here. This one's actually pretty good nick. So, what we'll do is um, clean, clean this a bit here. Yeah. Good condition? Yes. Get all this grease out of there. <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do is um, clean the gloves for a start. I like wearing nitrile gloves just because it keeps your hands cleaner. Uh, it's easier to scrub up. It's probably better for your skin. Well, definitely better for your skin. Uh, yeah. It's easier come to the time to wash up. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just uh, have a go at knocking the seal out, see if I can get it out one piece. Um, is it still pretty soft? You shouldn't really reuse a seal like that, especially for the cost of only about 20 bucks or something. Uh, but we might just keep it as a spare one in, um, in case we need it and we can't get one quick enough. There, it's just uh, There is the old seal. So you can see a little bit of corrosion and stuff around the outside, um, but still in pretty good nick. Just Let's put that aside. And so we just cleaned some of the gunk off it so we can have a better look. And um, the rubber lip is still soft, it's not torn, plenty, plenty of pressure on the garter spring. Um, the seat here where it sits into the counter bore is uh, pretty good condition. So we'll just put that aside as an emergency spare. Okay, we know this is the right size for pressing in the new seal, so that side as well. Apologies in advance for the cluttered work area. We've got a couple of projects on the go. Disaster discoveries, gearbox is being done as well at the same time, so plenty happening. All right, let's have a look at the new knuckle. Here's the new knuckle. You can see it came pre-fitted um, with the wheel bearing. The wheel bearing's in good condition smooth to turn, um, no play and so on. You see there's a, there's a bit of dirt in here as well that we'll clean up before the disc goes on. It's got the backing plate from the original car. There's a little tag from the wrecker, the vehicle that came off, so get that out. Uh, 
out of the way, did you know that you can undo cable ties really easy by just putting the blade in, releasing the catch. Okay. That cable tie is good for other use. Okay, so that's out. That's there. That's the hub there. And over. There is our seal, and this seal is totally stuffed. It's all hard. Um, Bits of it have come off, bits of elastic or something. So we'll get that, we'll get this seal out, um, clean it up and press a new one on. Okay, now we can see what's going on. So you see, this is the seal that we pulled out originally. And there's a lip here, which is missing in there. You see that, there's a lip here, that's missing there. So this isn't actually that good. The um, one lip is still intact, but the other one's missing. On this one, that lip that sits there is completely missing, which is the bits that we fished out, these ones. And we can compare that to the brand new one. Get that out of the packet. That's a brand new one and you can see there's fresh grease here where the V-ring runs off the drive shaft which is just on that surface there, I'll give you a close up. Um, there's an outboard lip, or an inboard I guess from this perspective, an inboard lip and um, a garter spring and then there's one on the other side. So we do need to change that seal uh, and you can see that it sits all the way up to here um, and um, forms a wear surface for the V-ring off the drive shaft. So if I bring the drive shaft up, let's put it over here. <laughs> there's the drive shaft. You can see here on this lip there's a V-ring. See that there? So this axle seal goes up like that, over that part of it, and the V-ring seal seals against that lip there. So what we'll do is pull this one out, fit this, and before we, we mount it to the drive shaft we'll have to grease this V-ring lip here, and that's what um, seals any sort of water and contamination from this side um, going in. There's also a bit of a labyrinth arrangement around here as well, so if you're, um, if you're failing your front wheel bearings often, you may want to check that inboard oil seal on the knuckle. Okay, so just notice this is dented too. Okay, so let's put the seal out. So I bought this doobie on special. Um, put this doobie on special, let's see if it actually works. So because of the way we prize that out, that'll pretty much be munted which it is, so I'll toss that straight out so we don't get them mixed up. This is the new seal. So when we press this new seal in, it's actually a tight fit on that surface there. So what we want to do is make sure we're pressing on that, which means we need to support 
on this surface here as we go in. Okay, so we're going to that out of the way. Need to press this in here. So I don't actually have a disc the right size, so I'm going to tap it across with that. First off, we want to make sure that we get it uh, set in and going in nice and square. So to do that, a bit of bar like that, we'll just tap it in gently. Before we do that, seal it up with a thin smear. That's a non hardening Permatex number three seal. So. Okay, so you can hear the tone changes that um, seal rig seats fully on there. You can also, one of the advantages using that sealant is you can see it squish out from beneath the mating surfaces. So you can see the new refurbished knuckle on the right and the old one on the left. So what you can see is here, the difference between these two. Um, is where it's bent and that's roughly about here where you can see all the paint come off. So that's a weak spot on the knuckle. You just have to be mindful of that. 